Forever chemicals, uh, also known as per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, um, are common in a lot of drinking water sources. Uh, the amount varies quite a bit from here to there, um, but certainly we should do whatever we can to try to eliminate uh, or reduce the amount that's in our drinking water because they have been associated with a number of adverse health effects, including cancer, uh, thyroid disease, impacts in our immune system, um, and a few other endpoints. Um, so it is certainly beneficial to try to reduce our exposure to these compounds. Do we have any idea how much water you'd have to drink before it became a concern? There's a lot of factors that go into that answer. It really depends on the amount in your drinking water and how much you're consuming um, over time, and also how it's changing, how the levels are changing in the drinking water over time. So there's a number of factors that would have to be considered. These chemicals can stick around in our bodies for a long time. Some of them can stay in our bodies. They have estimated half-lives of around five to seven years, meaning that if all exposure stopped, it would take five to seven years for the concentrations in our body to decrease by 50%. So they stick around a long time, hence the name Forever Chemicals. So what can we do to try to limit our exposure? One of the best actions an individual can take is to um, put a point of use water filter or install a point of use water filter in their home. Um, we've conducted a study here at Duke University along with colleagues at NC State University to evaluate different types of filters that one can have in their home. Uh, everything from your uh, water, your pitcher water filter that contains activated carbon up to more advanced uh, whole house uh, systems that are point of entry systems. We did find varied effectiveness, removal effectiveness among the different filters that we evaluated. Um, some worked really well and removed more than 99% of the PFAS that was coming in through the water supply. Others uh, did not work very well, and in fact, we found several that were appeared to be saturated in such a way that the filters uh, had PFAS accumulating in them, and then were kind of uh, desorbing off the material and increasing the concentrations of PFAS in the water supply. So one point that's very important is for individuals to make sure they're conducting routine maintenance on their filters and replacing the media, the cartridges, uh, on a frequent basis if they if they have known levels of PFAS in their water supply. So what was the best type of filter to have? So we evaluated uh, several different common types of filters, as I said. So some were filters on our refrigerator, some were the pitcher filters. And most people that we, um, we worked with in this study contained either a refrigerator filter or a pitcher filter. Uh, we had six participants that had a whole house filter, and then we did have, I think, 11 people that had that had installed reverse osmosis units and under the sink unit, um, and a few others had what we call dual stage filters that are also under the sink um, varieties. In general, we found that the reverse osmosis and the dual stage filters performed more optimally in removing PFAS from the water supply, typically more than 98% removal. Whereas um, some of the refrigerator filters and particularly pitcher filters had quite varied responses uh, or quite varied efficiency, removal efficiencies for PFAS. And a lot of it depended on how much was there and how old the system was, how long it's been since they've exchanged the cartridges, et cetera. I'm sorry, did you say the whole house filter performed okay? So we only had, we were only able to include six homes in our study that um, had a whole house filtration unit installed. And again, we found mixed results for these filtration systems when it comes to PFAS removal. We only evaluated PFAS removal. Um, some of these worked well and some of them did not work well. And there's a lot of nuances and differences in the media that's used, the age of the material, and again, how frequently we exchange the media that actually performs the filtration. So the lesson is no matter what filter you have, make sure you keep it working and in good order. Yes. I mean, the first point is that any filter will help, right? So as long as it um, has a new cartridge in it, it's going to remove some PFAS. Some work better than others, but a filter will help. It is just very important to replace those cartridges on a frequent basis, as recommended by the manufacturer. How much should we trust the water that's coming in from our government, our, our city? Is it safe to drink how it is now, or do we really need one of these filters? 
Um, well, I will say personally, I do have a reverse osmosis uh, filtration system uh, and under the sink unit in my own home because I am concerned about some of the emerging contaminants that we are recently that are identifying in the water supply. Um, sometimes there are chemicals there and we just don't have enough information to determine if they're going to have an adverse health impact or not. And sometimes once we learn there could be a potential risk, it can take a long time for policy to be implemented to phase out those chemicals from our drinking water supply. So I like to err on the side of caution uh, and include a filter, but I recognize that not everyone has the option to install these filters in their home because they can be, can be fairly expensive. Um, I think there's probably areas where the water is just fine and there might be other areas where the water supply we may have to be a little bit more cautious. It depends. What, what kind of question can you ask your city water department to find out? Um, well, so most water utilities are monitoring specific types of chemicals in their water supply on a frequent basis. So a good idea is always to ask them for copies of those reports. Uh, to inform yourself about what's been measured what's been detected what are the levels and how variable are they over time and, and find out where your water comes from i think many people may not even know where the water comes from that's coming out of their tap and that's important sometimes our water is coming from a surface source like a river or a lake sometimes it's groundwater um, both of those can sometimes be vulnerable to potential contamination depending on where you live what is the cheapest filter you found that works decently well well, certainly the pitcher filters are typically more cost effective um, and they do work to remove PFAS and other chemicals. Uh, as I said, it's just really important to change out those cartridges as frequently as possible, as frequently, frequently as possible. Ultimately, the effectiveness depends on the type of chemical, um, the other uh, constituents in the water and what volume of water you put through there. So again, there's a number of factors.